Welcome to episode 31 of Driver's Seat Blog Radio. I'm your host, David G. Firestone. And I'm not ashamed to say it, I had a very frustrating weekend with technical problems galore, needless frustration all around. So I'm only going to do a quick one because I'm actually really grouchy right now. So we're just going to do it again. We're going to do a short podcast this week. I'm going to talk about a couple of things that came up. I'm going to push some stuff back to next week. So here we go. Now, last week, I gave a few thoughts on the Alex Palou situation. Now, some stuff has changed since then. Uh, since I last did the podcast, the uh, judge has been named in court, and it looks like everything's going ahead. And I'll be interested to see in the coming weeks how this is going to work out. Now, not long if I, after I recorded last week's podcast, the exact same story repeated itself this time in Formula One. So Alpine F1 on August 2nd tweeted out, quote, 2023 driver lineup confirmed Esteban Ocon and Oscar Piastri. Piastri, I think that's how you pronounce it. I suck at pronunciation. Sorry. Quote, after four years as part of the Renault and Alpine family, reserve driver Oscar Piastri is promoted to a race yet along Espan Ocon starting from 2023. Minutes after this tweet went out, uh, Piestri retweeted, Piestri tweeted, excuse me, I quote, I understand that without my agreement, Alpine F1 have put out a press release late this afternoon that I am driving for them next year. This is wrong. I have not signed a contract with Alpine for 2023. I will not be driving for Alpine next year. Now, it needs to be noted that, unlike the Palou situation, there was no quote from Piestri in the press release. Now, at the time, there was no immediate and outright indication as to where he would be driving, though a few days later would later emerge he had apparently signed a long-term deal with McLaren. Now, this is interesting because the Palou situation also involves McLaren, so we have two driver contract disputes involving drivers and McLaren in the course of three weeks. Am I the only one who thinks that McLaren might need to upgrade their legal team? I mean, I'll give you a bad move once, but twice in three weeks, come on. So, there apparently contracts have been signed with McLaren, but Alpine just doesn't want to give up. This is, I'm going to read this next part from, uh, this is another uh, Chris Medland of Racer.com. I'll put the uh, sources in the uh, description. Quote, and if you think the situation can't any weirder, this is actually, this is proof that you're wrong. This is a quote from, this is a quote from the article. Alpine Racing is still open to running Oscar Piestri in 2023 despite the dispute with McLaren over his contract status, sitting that he will not race for the team. Racer understands that while McLaren believes Alpine doesn't have a contract with Pierre, the French contractor intends to submit documentation to the Contract Recognition Board. I don't know what country that's in, by the way that claims otherwise, which could lead to a tribunal to decide which is valid. Despite rumors there was no July 31st cutoff, deadline involved in the dispute and revolves around other technicalities. Uh, Sources at Alpine say they have no issue with McLaren and the way it has gone about its business, as Zach Brown's team was informed from Piastri's side, he was free to sign and duly made its move. However, Alpine is unhappy with the way the 21-year-old and his management team have turned their back after a heavy instrument in his junior career, heavy investment in his junior career, an ongoing Formula One testing program to prepare him for a race seat. Piastri has driven the 2021 Alpine at numerous venues around the world as part of a commitment in his contract of 5,000 kilometers of testing. It's been a long day. While the dispute will center around whether or not the contract is valid, and despite Alpine's disappointment at Piestri, Racer understands the team is still keen to run him 
next year if he is contractually obligated to do so. Alpine views PS3 as a long-term investment and wants to see its commitment through believing that both sides are professional enough to overcome the issue. So far, McLaren has not officially announced PS3, despite lodging a contract with the CRB while it finalizes Ricardo's issue. End quote. So yeah, that's a lot to take in. But I can... I just how does this same mistake happen twice in the course of three weeks? Do people not understand how contracts work in this day and age? I can understand if this was like the 1800s, the internet didn't exist, and lawyers were might cost more than a poor peasant could ever. But this is just amazing to me as somebody drives away outside. Now, one thing that I need to point out, and this actually really isn't a surprise, is that this has caused a lot of animosity between P- Piastri and Alpine F1 boss Otmar S- S-Z-A-F-N-A-U-R. I'm just going to refer to him as Otmar. Now, according to Racing News 365com link in the description, Otmar said, quote, We have a contract with Piastri, which he, sur- which he signed in November. We have spoken to our lawyers, and they have told us this is a binding contract. So part of that contract allows us to put Oscar in one of our cars in 2023, which is the reason we issued the press release, Otmar claimed. There was also an option for 2024 and the possibility to, quote-unquote, loan the driver out to another team. We wanted Fernando with us for one more year and a loan of Oscar for 2023. I've always said in my press conferences that Piastri would be in Formula 1 in 2023, and it is because I knew he could be in our car, in another car, on loan, if Fernando had stayed. But Alonso, for whatever reason, and I think I know the reasons, although you should ask him, he goes to Aston Martin. So we finalized the agreement, so we started to finalize the agreement with Piastri. Instead of giving him what we decided to put in our car, hence the statement. He would later go on to say that there should be some say that quote there should be some loyalty to the fact that we've invested literally millions and millions of euros to prepare him so I don't understand it either you should ask him I expected more loyalty from Piastri uh, he should have made he should he should have had it with that team <clears throat> sorry he should have he should have it with that team that has taken care of him, that has taken him to the world championship, and above all, th- that during the last year he, we put him in a Formula One car, so that would he, so that he could be ready, so that he would be ready, so that he would know the circuits. I expected more loyalty from Oscar from what he's showing. I started out in 1989 from Formula One, and I've never seen anything like this. And it's not about Formula One; it's about integrity as a human being. It could happen in ice hockey or soccer, it doesn't matter, but you don't do that. He signed a piece of paper, a document saying he would do something different. For me, this is the way I grew up. I don't need to sign a piece of paper to then have someone say you're lying because you signed this. For me, if you say, hey, help me, I'll help you tomorrow, there's no way I would go back on my word, no way. He goes on to say, you did everything I asked you to do, from Alpine to Piastri, and now... I promise you that if you do this, I will do this. I don't need a piece of paper that says, with claws, I can get out of here. Just as it starts to rain. The whole thing is amazing to me, that this situation could have happened twice in the course of three weeks with one particular entity being involved in both situations. is kind of stunning to me. I'm going to follow the Palouse situation. I'm going to follow this situation. And I don't know how this is going to end up, but I'll be real interested to see where it goes. So uh, the other um, major story that I'm going to talk about this week is revolving around the Music City Grand Prix. Um, It was a dumpster fire last year. It's a dumpster fire this year. Um, But I'll get to that in a little bit because there was something that took place that I had to talk about because it just shows 
how buzzwords can get around and just because something sounds good doesn't automatically mean that it is so earlier this week uh, before the uh, Music City Grand Prix, Firestone came out with their new, and I'm going to use quotes here, quote-unquote sustainable and quote-unquote eco-friendly tires. Now, in IndyCar's words themselves, they are made from the Wayuli tree. Wayuli is a drought-resistant, heat-tolerant, woody desert shrub native to northern Mexico and the southwestern United States. Natural rubber can be extracted from the branches, bark, roots, and roots of the shrub. The Waiuli rubber, the Waiuli natural rubber is located within the Firestone Firehawks sidewall. Bridgestone race tire engineers decided to use the Waiuli rubber in the entire sidewall because that area is made up of the most natural rubber. This allows Firestone to maintain the same quality and performance as the existing race tire. Okay, I get why you're using it. And I, I frankly, I mean... I have a feeling it might not be as eco-friendly and sustainable as some would want you to think. But that's neither here nor there. But why debut it at the Nashville Grand Prix? I mean, you haven't really done any real racing on it, so why would you test it at a street course that doesn't exactly have a great reputation? Why not wait a couple weeks? to the next race which is a worldwide technology race way where you have a lot of tire information you can do testing you can get a lot of good data why take the risk on a technology that you might be convinced that it worked but uh, results aren't always guaranteed I mean you could have something that looks good on the computer looks good on paper but in practice it sucks why would you pick a track that was so much of a dumpster fire and you're not going to get as reliable data as a track like Worldwide where you're running there yearly and you've been there for a while and you like, you can get you have already have a lot of data on it, why not run it there? It just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm going to guess that this might have been done as a headline grabber to get some attention for the upcoming race. But Again, it doesn't make any more sense. It doesn't make any more sense to me. And I'm also now convinced, going back to the Music City Grand Prix, that this race might be cursed. Uh, I say this because you had a lot of the same problems from last year's race that weren't really corrected. To top that off, you had the fact that the race was... Um, uh, delayed due to lightning, so it didn't really finish until close to 7 p.m. when it had to be moved to a CNBC, which proves that it can be done, and you don't need to run races on Peacock and Peacock only. And I'm really wondering, giving every, given everything that happened with the Wreckfest this year and the issues last year, I'm actually really wondering if it's going to be on the schedule next year. I mean, the damage that these cars incur during these races is not cheap to fix. And when you have a track that's more prone to wrecking, it just doesn't look good. So I hope this isn't a long-term contract, and I hope that IndyCar finds something better soon. I maybe go back to New Orleans, that's just my opinion. And I, th I hope that the Music City Grand Prix isn't on the schedule next year, though I have a feeling it might be. And, well, as a short podcast, I'm going to talk more next week if I can get all my technical issues pit fixed. I'm Dave Farson. Leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week for episode 32.